Hello everyone, thank you for having me here as a guest lecturer. My name is Ahmad Taufik and I'm going to be speaking to you today on Investment Management Framework, Case of Origin Energy. Uh, before we start, um, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we gather today and pay my respects to their elders both past and present. Um, currently, I'm working as a senior technical controls engineer with Origin Energy. Uh, Work-wise, I've spent the best part of the last 16 years in the areas of process automation, industrial automation, um, power plant operations, operational technology, IT, infocoms, and cybersecurity. Um, prior to Origin, I did spend some time with Siemens and other engineering companies. Um, my recent area of academic interest is the application of sustainable behaviors from an energy market perspective and the future of clean energy. I've worked on a paper looking at origin energy science-based emissions reduction targets. I presented a study on future uh, of clean energy on, at the 2021 International Council of Small Business uh, World Congress together with Dr. Maria. And we have also jointly submitted a paper at SIGRE's uh, Kyoto Symposium in 2022 focusing on embedded sustainable behaviors. My other areas of interest is in uh, entrepreneurship and business sustainability. I've looked at um, how companies rely on innovative and entrepreneurial behavior of employees to increase corporate performance, resilience, and competitive advantage. Um, I recently looked at um, Origin Energy's recent hackathon program, which aim at getting business ideas internally and transition towards business growth. I have presented this study at George Washington University's Entrepreneurship Week in 2021. Origin Energy is an Australian integrated energy company and among the largest energy retailer in Australia. Uh, Origin has diverse operations spanning across the um, energy supply chain including power generation and energy, energy retailing. Um, Origin also has significant power generation capacity and is responsible for around 13% of Australia's electricity generation. Um, Origin Energy are acutely aware of the shifting dynamics in the energy landscape. Innovation and technology is evolving rapidly and disrupt, disrupting this landscape. So what Origin try and do is identify what these disruptors are and firstly try and catch up and then get ahead of the landscape. Origin Energy work, wants to work with people out there who are disrupting this landscape. Um, origin look at technologies that fits to all parts of the business, whether it's generation, trading, business energy, acumen, or retail. Anyway, generation is a pivotal part of the new origin way, built upon the following five pillars, reliable, flexible, affordable, sustainable, and high performance culture. Let's start off with the investment management framework. The Investment Management Framework or IMF is a streamlined approach to investment evaluation, prioritization, approvals and delivery. It is driving a focus on benefits to ensure um, informed investments decisions can be made. The, um, the IMF applies to all origin investment committee and origin board investment approval decisions. Um, the core uh, principles of origin's investment management framework are to um, uh, uh, build long-term value for shareholders in line with Origin's purpose and strategy and maintain financial resilience and flexibility. Um, a bit of background uh, on the IMF. In June 2017, the Origin Investment Committee or OIC was formed for the group executive um, to oversee Origin's investment activity. It's a centralized committee. Uh, uh, the centralized committee ensures transparency and consistency across investment decisions. Um, the increased visibility allows for more successful collaboration and optimization across uh, business units. The OIC is chaired by the general manager, um, corporate strategy and development, and meets monthly um, to evaluate, endorse, and approve Origins investment funding. Uh, the Results Delivery Office administers the OIC and uh, performs independent assurance over investment business cases for standard projects.
the next few slides will highlight and uh, some components before we conclude by talking about the gated investment approach. Um, these are some of the key components of the investment management framework. Um, uh, the investment types. It defines what activities or deliverables are required under the investment management framework. Um, another key component is investments categories. It's used to prioritize uh, projects for funding allocation. And we also have the origin-wide investment business case and the investment economic assumptions, hurdles, and weighted average cost of capital, or the WACC. Um, origin projects follow a gated investment approach from inception to completion and the realization of benefits. Um, looking at the diagram, it starts with an, uh, 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 an idea to identify something that you need, require as part of a project or something you develop for. Um, then it goes to the um, ideas approval, which is gate one, and you get your seed funding. Um, then you move to the validate and design. Then you, before you move to the final investment decision, where you execute the project or the work or the business decision and then realize it. Um, then comes the another key component would be um, the origin investment committee or OIC. It's chaired by the CFO and uh, comprising members of the executive leadership team. Um, ELT to ensure investments and acquisitions are reviewed against strategy and investment hurdle criteria and appropriately, uh, appropriately prioritized prior to being recommended for approval. Um, another component is the RDO or the Results Delivery Office. Um, um, it supports the management of the OIC and provides independent review of business cases presented to the OIC for endorsement and approval. Uh, the RDO um, also helps the business improve its uh, project delivery practices. Um, the component we are talking about now is investment types. Uh, it defines several requirements and the use of specific templates and system that help maintain transparency of the investment to the origin investment committee. Um, the three types of investments are generally business unit, BU, fast track, and standard. The three investments are segregated by the investment value. For BU, it is less than um, AUD 250K. Um, for fast track, it is between Australian dollars 250K and Australian dollars 1 million. While for standard, it is any investment greater than um, Australian dollars 1 million. Um, for each of the investment type, there, these are some of the requirements. Needed to maintain transparency of the uh, investment, which is the RDO, um, Result Delivery Office Involvement. This is not required for BU type of investment, but needed for fast track and standard investment. Seed funding for BU and fast track investment. This is approved by the executive GM or the EGM or someone with the EGM's delegation of authority or DOA. But for standard investment, this has to be approved by the OIC or the Origin Investment Committee. Then there's the final investment decision. Um, similarly, for both BU and Fast Track investment, this is approved by the Executive General Manager or Group Manager, the EGM, or someone with the EGM's Delegation of Authority, DOA. But for Standard Investment, this has to be approved by the OIC, the Origin Investment Committee. Um, the business case. This is required for all three investment types. This is to support the purpose, strategic rationale, and financial information of the investment or project. Then there's the financial valuation model. In general, all three investment types requires a financial valuation model. This is a standardized method of financially assessing all projects the same way and is a critical element to support any business case. Um, financial setup. This is required for all types of investment. There are some key steps that uh, all project investment must follow in relation to the origins fixed assets and project accounting or FAPA or FAPA standards, including project definition, capital expenses definition, um, project uh, management assessment, uh, project approval forms, and even asset breakdown structure, cost forecasting. Um, this is required for all types of investment. This is a cost budget plan with a means to focus based on exact resources allocation enabling uh, 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 enabling to verify the actuals as a, at a granular level you know 
benefit tracking. This is required for all types of investment. This is used to capture benefits, increase revenue or decrease cost or, 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 or this benefit. Uh, and maybe examples, additional ongoing cost or project evaluation, uh, project variation. This is also linked to the cost and budget plan. This is where we can also capture carbon emission costs, be it financial or non-financial, reduce volume, like for example. Uh, status reporting monthly. This is mainly for standard investment. Uh, good consistent project status reporting helps keep project stakeholders informed of critical aspects of project health, such as cost, schedule, scope, and benefits, and allows management to take action to address project issues and risk. Um, PMs or project managers are encouraged to identify issues and risks early on. Um, the earlier the, this happens, the more likely that the issues can be mitigated via escalation and the project um, return to green or within budget or healthy. Another one is another requirement is milestone tracking. Um, this is mainly for standard investment. We use tools like Microsoft Project, Gantt charts, and Clarity. Um, Clarity is a software application we use or a web portal of sorts. We use Clarity for other requirements like status reporting, cost forecasting, execution plan, and task review. Last but not least, requirement from this component is execution plan. This is required for fast track and standard investment. The execution plan or EP describes how an initiative will be delivered and should be used as a reference throughout the investment delivery, uh, throughout the investment delivery rest process. Some elements of the EP may already be covered in the business case. However, sometimes it is not possible to publish the business case to everyone due to the sensitive nature of some of its uh, content. So it is advised that these elements are included in the EP. Some of the uh, uh, template system or tools that I've just mentioned above to address requirements include the fast track template, um, the business case template, a clarity application, clarity business case, cost plan, clarity task and milestone and project execution plan. Um, another component is investment categories. The first investment category is mandatory. You know, um, external obligations to comply with legislation, regulations, existing permit commitments, abandonment, rehabilitation and restoration provisions. Uh, the next investment category is maintain and sustain, uh, whereby you maintain functionality and performance levels, you know, or, or board or other internal mandated standards, example, cybersecurity requirements for a uh, 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 power station or control systems, um, mitigate risk, including maintenance, um, system stability, equipment replacement, address health and safety uh, or environment issues or reputational risk. And, or to meet contractual requirements, example, uh, associated exploration and appraisal activity in some in some cases in the power station, um, there are some contractual requirements that you need to do with um, either the business or um, something that you need for um, the community or with um, uh, health and safety, so or with the energy market operators. Another investment category is productivity. Um, like incremental change, doing more with the same or less. Sample would be you need um, optimization projects. Um, also, another example would be enhanced performance of an existing business system platform or process, whereby we're using uh, uh, a brand new software uh, or an upgraded software, or we need to change the platform going from traditional methods to SAP or something like that. Um, and benefits typically relate to cost reduction. That means, you know, when you automate things, you know, cloud migration to AWS, um, those kind of benefits related to cost reduction. And last category is growth. Um, it's investment increased business scale and revenue. You know, this includes acquisitions, future energy investments, brownfield or greenfield asset development, exploration and appraisal activity, bidding on new permits, accessing new markets or market segments. Uh, funding allocation projects and investment budget process as part of the annual budget process projects programs will be ranked to facilitate allocation of budget capital and, and operational expenditure um, following completion of the budget process the origin investment committee will delegate uh, 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 
uh, what they call this uh, um, uh, uh, they will delegate approval of some projects programs to the EGM or the executive general manager a mandatory and maintain and sustain initiative below 30 million will generally be delegated to EGMs for approval growth and productivity initiative will generally not be delegated um, uh, to the EGM and instead will be um, looked after um, and, and, and by the OIC, the Origin Investment Committee. Next component is investment business case. The business case represents the what and why of your initiative and is the primary artifact that offers the best opportunity to uh, achieve a positive result of the final investment decision or FID. Um, um, for standard projects, it enables the Origin Investment Committee to determine if the project has the right strategic fit for origin, uh, uh, provides the right financial and non-financial benefits, um, clearly identifies the risk and mitigation strategies, um, takes input from all relevant stakeholders. Uh, the level of detail in business case should consider size and relative complexity of the project. Some of the sections may be covered with a single paragraph and some may require extra detail. Must have obviously um, uh, EGM, the executive GM uh, sponsorship. Why complete the business case? Plan and prepare upfront and define success. Clearly articulate the benefits to be delivered by the project. Um, to communicate range of outcomes to the investments may deliver. Uh, identify and share risk uh, and mitigation plans. Uh, uh, provide a framework for delivery and performance monitoring during the project. Uh, uh, provides a, a comparison point for post-implementation reviews, including benefits. Um, it also uh, have the financial uh, valuation summary. A financial model is a critical element supporting your business case. Uh, an Excel template is available to extract the key outputs from your financial model by linking the calculations and assumptions you provide and calculates the three metrics that are required to go to the um, FID. Um, or the final investment decision, which is the NPV, the net present value, the IRR, which is the internal rate of return, and discounted payback period. Another component is the investment economic assumptions, hurdles, and weighted average cost of capital, WACC, to ensure consistency of investment valuations and to support initiative owners and sponsors. There are three components to the origin investment management framework. Uh, the board approved weighted average cost of capital WACC to be used for discounting cash flows, the internal guidance on hurdle criteria and investment economic assumptions IEAs to be used in the financial modeling including low sensitivity assumptions. Uh, the weighted average cost of capital or WACC is uh, it represents a company's blended cost of capital across all sources including common shares, preferred shares uh, and debt. Um, WACCs acknowledge the different risk profiles of the core businesses and are relevant when assessing the returns of potential investments. The IRR are the internal guidance on the hurdle criteria. Um, internal guidance on investment hurdle criteria. Huge criteria and suited hurdle rates will be used as a guide to test all investment that go to the OIC and board for approval. And the IEAs are the investment economic assumptions. The IEAs are origin wide assumptions for the major commodity and macroeconomic variables used in financial modeling. They consist of base case assumptions and low sensitivity assumptions. Now we talk about the delivery approach. Um, that's identified. During this brief phase, you will need to figure out the following. Um, uh, uh, the goals. This includes key objectives and measures of success for your project. Um, ownership and structure pertaining to the initiative elements such as business unit, risk, sponsors, start days, etc. Um, stakeholders. This can be individual group or organization who may affect or be affected by or perceive itself to be affected by decision, activity or outcomes of your project. The cost plan, the anticipated capital expenditure or capex, and any project opening uh, operating expenditure opex. Uh, uh, benefits ongoing and all uh, one of benefits including you know non financial uh, uh, benefits, and and ongoing costs associated with the changes you prepare to put in place. 
the object the objective is to gather enough information to present uh, uh, the sponsor and gain authorization and potentially potentially seed funding to proceed in, to proceed into the next phase. Uh, the identify phase is short and typically uses resources that are already available within the business and as such does not require specific investment funding. Therefore, the investment management framework will not apply. Validate and design. During this phase, you will need to define the business, customer and engineering technology solution at a detailed level. Uh, 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 you have to evaluate and prototype design solution, refine estimates and identify contingencies, uh, develop and submit business and business benefit case. Uh, you know, now your idea has been approved, it's time to confirm the solution and measure the project's value and feasibility. This is a proof of concept and planning phase to build up the business case and financial model with a focus on commercialization your, uh, commercializing your project and seeking approval to move into the execute phase of the project. Or right now at the execute phase or execution. Uh, execute is the time to deliver against your proposed budget case and bring your project to life. The goal of a successful uh, execution of a project is to deliver to time, cost and quality expectations. Uh, execution of a project can be split into five key stages that can be done in a sequential approach. Uh, like a waterfall method or iterate, uh, iteratively for each requirement, maybe agile method or, or, or mix of both waterfall and agile, like a hybrid. Uh, that's this part of plan and design. Before you embark on building a solution, it is important that the team and their stakeholders understand how the project will be delivered. That's the build uh, at this point where your project plan is put into motion and the work of the project is performed. Then there's the test. This step encompasses the activities required to check that the solution the team has built does what it was designed to do. Um, the testing is to be detailed and thorough if you want to get a quality result. Then there's the implement uh, portion, which is here the team will deliver the final solution into the operational environment and perform any hyper care required to stabilize the solution and support the business. And at the end is the close. You have made it. Now it's time to um, uh, formally close the project and hand over all project items to the business. Then comes the next stage, realize. Now the solution is operational. Hypercare is complete and the project has closed. It's time to track the committed benefits and capabilities of the investment. During this phase, you'll need to monitor, adjust and report on the benefit plan. You have to ensure ongoing stability of the solution, business or asset and take corrective action as required. Um, this comes to the end of, of, of uh, uh, the whole uh, presentation. In conclusion, the investment management framework is a streamlined approach to invest, investment evaluation, prioritization, approvals and delivery. Uh, 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 driving focus on benefits to ensure informed investment decision, decisions can be made. Um, it is by no means the only way to frame investment management. The IMF forms a structured guideline for investment management. This could be supplemented with other guidelines like benefits management, you know, project risk management or change management. Um, and, and in conclusion, origin specifically, uh, the investment follows a gated investment approach from inception to completion and the realization of benefits. This approach has four parts, identify, validate and design, execute and realize. I hope you have enjoyed this short session about the investment invest, uh, management framework at Origin Energy. Um, I'd like to thank all the students, staff of this fantastic university and Dr. Maria for allowing me the opportunity to present here at the Montford University. Um, Thank you. Um, and you can contact me via my email if you have further interest about this topic and its application and origin energy. Um, thank you very much.